Well, hey everybody, it's Pastor Josh here once again up in our empty youth room, and I can't get used to that. Uh, I miss you guys like crazy. I love you all. Um, I'm, I'm excited when I do get to see some of you face to face, whether that's, you know, I, I've dropped off some care packages and seen some of you. A couple of you have dropped by my house unexpectedly and still so social distance, so that was nice. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, some of you have even dropped some stuff off at my house, and I've appreciated that as well. My family's appreciated that. But again, just want to communicate to you that I love you, uh, that I miss you, and that I'm excited that hopefully some of our restrictions will be lifted and we'll be able to transition to something that's more face-to-face. -face. We don't know exactly what that looks like yet. Um, for those of you that were able to gather with us, uh, through Zoom last weekend. Uh, I did talk about the fact that for uh, moving forward as the restrictions are lifted, probably our next step uh, that's beyond something virtual is to do some, some things through our life groups. And so hopefully you're connected with a life group leader. If you're not, let us know and we want to connect you into a life group because we think that connection is so vitally important during this time. Um, and so, like I said, those, those next steps would be something like meeting together with your life group, probably in a public place or, uh, you know, outside somebody's house. We, we may not be quite to the point where we're meeting inside homes yet, um, but that would be kind of the next phase of, of what we'd get into. And hopefully we can do that within the next couple of weeks or, or several weeks at least. Um, but we will certainly let you know as soon as we uh, make that decision. Uh, how that's going to work moving forward. The other thing I want to make sure that you know is that our Elk Rapids trip up north has been canceled. Um, our hosts, and that wasn't a surprise to us, but our hosts just said it's, it's not going to be feasible for us to do that in June. And so what we are going to do is we're, we're trying to put together uh, a more local experience right here in Jackson. During that same week, June 22nd through the 26th, I think I got those dates right. And uh, just doing different things around, in and around Jackson where we can serve people and show people the love of Jesus. So we hope that you'll be a part of, the, of that. It'll probably be uh, most look like just some day trips. It won't be overnight stuff even here at the church. Uh, we don't think that we'll be prepared to do anything like that quite yet. Um, but again, we just hope that you'll engage with us, and we think it's going to be a fun time. We think it's going to be an impactful time. So hope that you'll join us with that. All right, well, as you can see, I am dressed in my finest, my finest holiday gear. This past week, uh, we celebrated Star Wars Day, or at least some of us did. And if you didn't, I do, in fact, find your lack of cheer disturbing. Um, but because... May the 4th happen this week. May the 4th be with you. Um, I was, I've been celebrating all week Star Wars because I'm such a huge Star Wars fanatic. And uh, I love Star Wars, everything about it. I don't care whether it's prequels or the, the trilogy or the post-trilogy. I don't care if it's the Clone Wars, if it's uh, Rebels. I love all things Star Wars. And uh, you probably knew that about me based on the, the things that I wear. And if you've ever been to my office, then you've seen quite a bit of Star Wars paraphernalia uh, all over the place. So in honor of that, we're going to do something right now through our live uh, YouTube chat. We're going to do a, a Star Wars trivia, and we're inviting everybody to participate in this. Um, and basically, how you get points is you're the first person to either text or type in the correct answer and send that to our live chat. So if you get uh, any of the questions correct, if you're the first person to, to submit an answer that's correct, you'll get one million points. I know, we are giving away points like crazy tonight. So you'll get a, a million points for that. And uh, at the end of these 12 questions, we'll see who's got the most points. So get your fingers ready to go. Get your, get your Star Wars trivia hats on. And uh, we're, we're ready to roll this Star Wars trivia. Here we go. First person to enter the answer into the chat will get the million points. Question number one. What is the title given to an apprentice of a Jedi? What is the title given to an apprentice of a Jedi? And I'll give you just a few seconds. I know you're feverishly typing away right now. And the correct answer, of course, is 
a Padawan or a Padawan learner? I would accept either of those answers, and I'm guessing somebody has already written that out by now. So a million points to whomever that was. Excellent job. Here we go. Question number two. Again, get your fingers ready. In episode two, Attack of the Clones, what is the name of the planet where the clone army is created? In episode two, what's the name of that planet where the clone army is created? Once again, I'm giving a few more seconds for you to type in that answer. And by now, I'm sure it's shown up. And the correct answer is Camino. Camino is that planet. All right, next question. In which episode, so we're talking episodes one through nine, in which episode does the Chancellor become the Emperor? It's no longer Chancellor Palpatine, he is Emperor Palpatine. What episode does that happen? And I'm sure by now the answer has been revealed, and it is episode three. Episode three, Revenge of the Sith. All right, question number four. In episode four, A New Hope, Han Solo claims that his ship, the Millennium Falcon, made the Kessel Run in less than what? I'll read it again, but you might, be, you might know the answer. Uh, in episode four, Han Solo claims his ship, the Millennium Falcon, made the Kessel Run in less than what? This is as they're in the, the cantina in Tatooine, and he makes this claim to Obi-Wan and to Luke. And of course, the answer is in less than 12 parsecs. 12 parsecs. And they explained that in the movie Solo, uh, which I thought was fun. All right, question number five for another million points. Speaking of the Millennium Falcon, on what planet was the Falcon made? Where did they build that thing? What planet was the Millennium Falcon uh, built on? Same planet where Han Solo came from. And the correct answer is Corellia. Corellia. That's a Corellia. Corellian YT-1300 transport is the, the actual model number of it. Yes, I am that nerdy. And so a million points to whoever said Corellia first. Question number six. In episode five, The Empire Strikes Back, what is the name of the creatures chewing on the power cables of the Millennium Falcon when it's inside the cave that's not really a cave. What's the name of those creatures that are chewing on the power cables and uh, they're inside the worm creature? So what, what are the name of those creatures chewing on the power cables? Hopefully by now somebody has answered the question and the answer is Minoc. Minoc. All right. All right, for question number seven, I'm going to give one million points for the correct answer. And if the correct answer is actually spelled correctly, you'll receive another one million points. So possible two million points for question number seven. What planet is Chewbacca from? Where does Chewbacca come from? What's the name of his planet? Again, an extra million points if you spell this correctly. The correct answer is Kashyyyk. K-A-S-H-Y-Y-Y-K. That's right, three Y's in a row. Kashyyyk, that's how you spell it, and that's what it's called. Two million points if you spelled it right. Here we go, question number eight. What type of crystal is used to power a lightsaber? What type of crystal is used to power a lightsaber? You learn a whole lot about this in the movie Rogue One. And I think by now somebody has written this down. And the answer is Kyber Crystal. Kyber Crystal. All right, question nine. Speaking of Rogue One, in that movie, what is the name of the large black droid who was originally programmed and owned by Imperials? He was an Imperial security droid, and they rewired him, and he was part of the, the Rebels. And what was his name? His name, of course, was K2SO. K2SO. All right. Question number 10 for another million points. 
What is the name of Darth Maul's brother introduced in the animated Clone Wars series? What's Darth Maul's brother's name? If you watch Clone Wars, you've seen those episodes. They're pretty sweet. And uh, what is his name? His name, of course, is Savage Opress. Savage Opress. All right. Two more to go, and then we'll be done with this quiz. Question number 12. What planet is Ray from? Where do we find Ray in episode 7? She is on this planet, parentless, and no one seems to like this planet. They all think it's a backwater nothing planet. And it, of course, is the planet Jakku. Jakku. And the final question, question number 12. What is Finn's stormtrooper number? What is his number that he's identified by when he was still uh, a stormtrooper? I guess there's letters as well, but they call it the, the trooper number. And that trooper number is, I'm giving you a few more seconds. The trooper number is FN2187. FN2187. All right. So right about now, as I'm watching this with you, I'm sure that I'm feverishly calculating those millions of points to try to determine the champion. And so whoever you are, congratulations. You have my deepest respect. And once this pandemic thing is over, if you ever want to come over to my house and watch some Star Wars with me, I will gladly do that uh, because I love to watch them even over and over and over again. Awesome. Well, I am anxious to dive into week three of our Let's Pray series. Uh, this is a series where we've been trying to use some creative ways to communicate with God. And so in week number one, we learned about a practice called Lectio Divina, which is just Latin for divine reading. And uh, we, we went through Lectio Divina with Psalm 103. And Lectio Divina is really just a way of reading through a passage of Scripture several times and then doing our best to, within those few readings, hear from the Spirit of the Lord a word or a phrase that just kind of jumps off the page at us. And we think this is the way that God's trying to speak to us through His Word that He's given to us in the Bible. And so we went through that practice um, together. You did some of that on your own even. And, and then we challenged you throughout the week um, to read through some of those first five psalms and to attempt some more Lectio Divina on your own. Uh, then in week two, we transitioned to something called imaginative prayer. And if you were a part of our uh, video that week, then you know that imaginative prayer is simply the process of having Scripture actually read to you, either by someone who's there with you, a guide that's leading you, or we, we mentioned to you an app called Pray As You Go. And that's an app that takes you through these imaginative prayer exercises where the app reads it to you, and then you are just imagining yourself in the story. So you're imagining and using your five senses to say, man, what am I hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, touching as I'm a part of this process, as I place myself into the text? And again, we, we recommended to you that Pray As You Go app where there were six more uh, of those exercises that you could go through. Uh, when we did it live, we went through Psalm 23, which was probably a familiar psalm to many of us. And we, we put ourselves in that passage, and I led you through that. But again, hopefully you've had a chance to download that app, pray as you go, and go through one or two or all six of those exercises. Um, I would encourage you, if you weren't a part of, of week one or week two of this series, um, you know, those videos you can find on our YouTube uh, channel. And I would just encourage you to watch those. And then if you're up for it, take those challenges on and go through some, go through some Lectio Divino, go, excuse me, Lectio Divina, or go through some imaginative prayer. And, you know, try your best at different creative ways that you can communicate with the Lord. All right, so 
as I said now, we are in week three, and we're now going to transition to a different mode of prayer, and it's called written prayer. And it's not really, um, you know, it's no more complex than, than the name suggests. It requires that you have uh, a, probably a notebook or a journal and something to write with, and that's about it. Or if, you're, if you like to do things electronically, maybe you do that on a laptop or on a tablet or, or even on your phone, you can do written prayers to the Lord. Now, when I was in late high school and then into college, I got to be a part of a conference called IYC. Well, now we know it as FMYC. They've changed the name slightly. It stands for Free Methodist Youth Conference. And it's a conference where uh, youth from all over the United States, from Free Methodist churches, get together in one place to worship the Lord and to be challenged and to grow in their faith, um, to try to spread their faith to their friends and to those that they care about. And for me, FMYC, or IYC as it was called, was a super impactful thing in my life. Uh, I think it was one of the, one of the few reasons a uh, few most important reasons that I chose to pursue a calling into ministry. Um, it, was, it just had a profound impact on my life. The speakers that I heard from, the worship that I got to participate in, um, the hanging out with my friends from youth group and ha- just making these mountaintop, literally mountaintop experiences uh, were crucial to my development as a follower of Jesus. Now, here's the really cool thing, as I sort of take an aside from this story. FMYC is coming down the pike. It's, it's scheduled for next summer, the summer of 2021, uh, June 28th through July 2nd. Um, I'm privileged to get to be a, actually a part of the, the planning team for this event that's coming up uh, next summer. It's myself and I think eight or nine other youth leaders from across the country as we put our heads together and try to figure out you know, some of the themes and different Uh, things that we're going to talk about together, different ways we're going to challenge each other. Uh, It's been exciting to be a part of that team. And uh, we're we're creating this um, even now. And so I'm excited to tell you guys about it. I hope that you'll be a part of it. Um, Our our group went four years ago, or well, it will be four years ago in 2017, and just was an awesome time. We saw lots of our teens make important decisions in their faith. And so I would encourage you in that direction. Um, but going back to my story, um, when I got to be a part of those, those conferences, it was a really impactful time in my life. And one of the things that I took away from that was written prayer. And I spent a summer doing a whole lot of written prayer right after FMYC, um, where I would read God's Word, and I would journal, and I would write different things to Him, and even, even write to myself in certain ways of, of just ways that I know that I could um, be a, a better follower of Jesus. And so like I said, this written prayer practice, is there's nothing profound or there's nothing that's, that's more difficult than what that name actually says. It's just simply you writing your prayers to the Lord. Um, But it does something different in our hearts, you know, for many of us, as we write and as we even see those prayers being written down, there's just a way that we remember those a little bit better. And obviously, because they're recorded, um, you have those things to look back on and to say, man, this this is how I can see God has answered some of these prayers that I've actually written and submitted to him. And so we're going to go through a few things about written prayer and uh, even give you a chance to do some written prayer on your own tonight before you jump into life groups. Um, but let me, let me actually pray for us right now. Just, just pause right now and recognize that God is in the room with me here today as I film, but he's also in the room with you as you watch. He's in the room with each and every one of us as we participate in this practice. So let's just bow our heads and, and acknowledge him right now. God, I want to just thank you that you're here with me. That even in this empty room where I'm, it feels like I'm here by myself, you're with me. Man, that's an exciting thing. That's a, that's a calming thing. It gives me a great sense of peace and a great sense of joy that you're in this room with me. And likewise, you're in the rooms uh, and you're just with every single person that's watching this right now. You're, you're in their presence. And so we're thankful for that. 
And we ask now that your Holy Spirit would speak something to us today, something that we could take away uh, from this time, and it would cause us to become more and more like Jesus. That's what I'm praying. And I'm praying this in the powerful name of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so um, we've done this the last couple of weeks. Raise your hand now if you've ever written out a prayer. Raise your, yep. Yeah. Oh, yep, I see those. I see all of those hands. Thank you for participating. My guess is that many of you have done a, some sort of process like this where you've physically written out a prayer to the Lord. And uh, that, that's exciting to me. And I hope it's something that excites you even moving forward, if, especially if it's a practice that you're not in the habit of doing, that maybe you would say, you know what, I need to get back into that habit. Or you know what, I need to adopt that habit so that I can communicate more effectively with the Lord. And so I'm excited to talk a little bit about that tonight. You know, written prayer is all over, uh, all over the, the pages of Scripture from different men and women throughout uh, the history of the Bible who have taken the time to write down their prayers to the Lord. And so what's important is, you know, they took the time to do that, but also because it was written down, others have been able to look at that and to learn different ways to communicate with the Lord. I'm going to quickly run through um, five really powerful prayers in Scripture, and I would encourage you to write these down if you have the capability of doing that or, or put them on your phone somewhere. Um, but I'm going to just quickly run through these. The first one is, is called the Prayer of Jabez. You'll find that in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10. Uh, great prayer there. The next one, and again, I'm not going through these. I'm just kind of giving you the reference so you can go through them on your own. The next one is called the Lord's Prayer. And my guess is many of you have heard that before. But you find that in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And it's just simply a way that Jesus gave to his disciples. They said, how should we pray? And he said, here's how you should pray. Uh, the next one's found in the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verses 2 through 9. And it's called Jonah's Prayer of Salvation. If you're familiar with the story of Jonah, Jonah disobeys God. God says, hey, you need to go over here. And Jonah says, nope, I'm going this way. He gets on a ship. They throw him overboard because there's a terrible storm. And Jonah says, it's my fault. God's upset. And a huge fish swallows him. And so in the midst of Jonah being in the belly of the whale, he, he uh, says this prayer to the Lord. And then later on, it's recorded in Scripture, this prayer of salvation. Next one is Hannah's prayer of praise. You find this in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Hannah was a barren woman. She was not able to have children, but she kept praying to the Lord to give her a child. And God finally answered that prayer. And Hannah, then in, in chapter 2 of, of 1 Samuel, she gives this really awesome prayer of praise to the Lord and thankfulness uh, for what he has done in her life. And then uh, the last one that we're talking about or that I'm just referencing quickly is David's prayer for deliverance and that's found in Psalm 3. So a psalm of, of deliverance. All right. So prayer, written prayer can be this great tool. We can learn a ton about prayer by even reading these prayers that we find within Scripture. Okay. Now, I'm going to quickly again go through seven things that, that the Psalms will teach us about prayer. Okay, real quick, seven things that the book, and we've, we've been hanging out in the Psalms. The first week we went through Psalm 103, then Psalm 23 the second week. This week, uh, I'll, I'll pause and, and we'll wait to tell you exactly where we'll be hanging out, but it's in one of the Psalms. But here's a, a, several things, seven things that the Psalms can teach us about prayer. So this, this first one is prayer can be written. <laughs> Duh, we're talking about that right now. But you find that, I mean, Psalm 1 through 150, all 150 Psalms, they are written prayers, many of them from King David. And it's just uh, evidence and further proof to us that it's important that we take the time to write our prayers to the Lord. Oh, look at that. My mic cord decided to join me up front. Second thing is prayer can be adoration. Uh, you'll find that in Psalm 8. Uh, and probably many other psalms, but Psalm 8 is a great example of a, a prayer of adoration. Uh, the next one is Psalm 9. Prayer can be thanksgiving, just giving thanks to God. Thank you so much, God, for what you, you've done in my life and who you are. Psalm 10. Prayer can be question-filled. All right? 
These are, there are some great psalms in Scripture, and one of them is Psalm 10, where David just asks tons of questions. Like, God, why are you doing this in my life? Why can't I feel your presence? Why haven't you delivered me from this thing? Uh, why are my enemies triumphing over me? I mean, David was, was king, but he was the king of questions. And he didn't, we've talked about this in, in previous weeks, he never pulled any punches. He just said, God, this is where I'm at, and this is what I need the answer to this question. And so he didn't shy away from answer, uh, asking tough questions of the Lord. The next one is prayer can ask for protection, Psalm 11. Prayer can ask for protection from enemies, from different things that might have strongholds over us. We can ask God, God, I need your protection in these times. Psalm 12, uh, prayer can be petitioned for help. So this is a little bit different from protection, but again, it's asking God for, for that provision. Like, give me some help, Lord. I need you in order to get through this situation. I need you in order to help me through whatever it is I'm facing in this moment. And then finally, and this is the one we're going to focus more closely on today, uh, from Psalm 51, prayer can be a confession. Written prayer can be a confession to the Lord. So again, we're going to look at Psalm 51 in a little bit greater detail. We're going to use this psalm as an example of one of David's written prayers. And this is a specific prayer that King David wrote as he was in the midst of probably one of the craziest times uh, of his entire life. And it was self-induced. I mean, in other words, he, he brought the drama to himself. All right. If you're not familiar with the story, King David uh, is up, you know, hanging out on his, his rooftop of the palace, and he sees a woman bathing. And he says, you know what, that woman looks attractive to me. And he tells his servants, go get that woman for me. Well, that woman was married, and David slept with her, and he committed adultery. And then that woman got pregnant. Well, David decides, oh, I, I need to somehow cover this up. And so he finds the woman's husband who was out in battle. He was serving uh, in the army. And David brings him home. And, and his hope is that this man, his name was Uriah, Uriah would go home and sleep with his wife. And so hopefully that child, he would just think, oh, yeah, that's my child. I slept with my wife and she got pregnant. Well, because Uriah is an honorable man, he says to King David, how could I go home right now to be with my wife when my friends are out there on the front lines of battle? And so he refuses even to go and be with his wife. And so David's plan seemingly is foiled. And so what does he do? He just continues to pile up his sin. And he, he tells the commanders of the army, hey, put Uriah at the very front of the battle. And then when, I, when you give the word, draw back from him. In other words, it was a death sentence for Uriah. And so Uriah was killed in battle. And David, you know, he, he took his first initial sin and just kept piling on top of it. And soon afterwards, the prophet Nathan speaks to David and says, David, you've done a terrible thing. And David realizes, oh my goodness, uh, I've just done sin after sin after sin. And so Psalm 51 is his written confession to the Lord. So I'm going to go through that uh, with you tonight. And then after that, you'll have a chance on your own to write a prayer of confession. And it may not be uh, the same as, as David's. You may be, in, hopefully you're not in the same situation. Um, but my guess is you can think of different things that you need to confess to the Lord. Um, and we'll talk about that as we, as we get done. So here's Psalm 51. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. 
Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. David finally confesses to his sin. He, he confesses that sin to the Lord. And, and later in the, in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the book of 1 John, we learn that if we confess our sins to God, even the crazy sins like the ones King David committed, God is just, he's faithful, he will forgive those sins because of what Jesus has done for us. And so for today... As we close out this video, my challenge to you in the next uh, few minutes, we're gonna, your, your life group leaders are going to be kind of pausing, waiting, giving you about 15 minutes for you on your own to write out a prayer of confession to the Lord. Now again, my guess is you haven't committed adultery and then piled that up with deceit and, and murder and all those different things that David did. But um, the, the Lord tells us that every sin is a separation between us and him. And so we need to confess those things to him. Um, it will relieve burden from us as we confess to him. And so take a few moments uh, during this time to confess your sin. Write those things down to the Lord. After you're done with that process, then you'll meet together with your life group leader um, through whatever means you guys normally do, whether that's Zoom or FaceTime or however you're doing that. And then they will also give you some different ways uh, throughout this week that you can be writing different types of prayer to the Lord. Again, our whole goal throughout this series is to give you different ideas and different ways that you can communicate with the Lord. And so we hope you take advantage of that. As I've said over and over again, love you guys, miss you like crazy, and I'm looking forward to being face to face, face with you soon. Um, stay safe and uh, be smart. And uh, we'll hope to see you next week. Have a great week, guys.